Going on, people, it's Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. And today, we're going to get a little real. We're going to get very real. Many of you can't read or speak English correctly. I know that sounds elitist. I know that sounds, well, hotty tot. That sounds like me being an arrogant dick. But it's true. One of the things that you've got to do is learn how to use the English language correctly. You have to if you want to make a lot of money. Sure, you can get to six figures. You might even be able to get to a million hustling. But if you keep sounding like some ignorant jackass, it is going to announce to the world that you're stupid. Even though you may not be stupid. I am dyslexic. I have a speech impediment. Not had, have. I routinely mispronounce words. As some of you like to point out, like, ha ha, I'm smarter than Glendon because I know how to pronounce this word. I just started to speak up about it because, we'll, we'll get into that a little later, but I want to address some of those things that you need to do now, and they're free. Y'all love free. And speaking of that, you should be hitting the super chat. If you're catching the replay, you can super chat that below. And during the show, you should be super chatting because I'm about to drop some real knowledge that's going to make you some money if you do the work. If you're one of those people like, I ain't going to do nothing unless it's guaranteed money, just turn this video off. It ain't for you. All right, so let's get into it. One of the things you need to do is test yourself. You need to go to this site here, National Adult Reading Test. I'll leave it up here for a second. And you need to test your reading comprehension skills. Many of you cannot read correctly. Many of you cannot read on a 12th grade level. Did you know that most books are written on a sixth grade level and we have people who struggle to read them? When I was writing my first book, and I had the word Calvinistic in there, which means rigid. My editor said, you need to take that out. Most folks ain't going to know what that means. The more words that you know, and you know the correct meaning and usage of them, the greater your income. And I'm about to show you something that's going to blow your mind. Do, 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 do. Yes, this fool. Now, let's go to Wikipedia. And I want you to know some here. You're going to see all of this stuff here, right? You see all of that. $84 million a year. And you see this, you see this, you see this. Professional career, he was a disc jockey. I'm going through it, right? Mm-hmm. Media appearances. Works. Views. Abortion. African Americans. Notice something's missing. Can you put it in the comments? Personal life. Prescription drug addiction. Have you still figured out what's missing? What's missing, people? I should give someone $100 for the first person to get the, that question correctly. All right, I'm going through this. This is very, very important. Mm -hmm. There is something very important that's missing. Very important. But let's go back up to uh, this. The... Uh, the $84 million a year. 
net worth half a billion dollars. What's missing? Let me go in the comments. Let me check them out. Let's see what. All right. <laughs> I did. Thank you, Johnny Walton, for being the mod. I appreciate you. Let's see. Anisha Briggs, education. Donald Brown, education. Randall Riley, education. Trending business, no college. CCWMS, no education. Emmanuel Gilbert, schooling. It's just nay, education. Will Wizard, his education credentials. He doesn't have any education credentials. He didn't go to college. I want you to, let's, let's just look at this again. $84 million a year income and a net worth of half a billion dollars and he does not have a degree. If this ain't proof positive that you can make a lot of money <laughs> without an education, I don't know what is. I'm going to tell you how he did it. And I'm also going to let you know I used to listen to Rush Limbaugh every day. And I didn't listen to him because of his views. Hate him or love him. Rush Limbaugh has an exceptional command of the English language. That alone is is the reason he is so rich. He has the gift of gab. He knows what words to use. He knows how to use them. He is very good with the American vocabulary. That's it. Now, imagine Rush Limbaugh, and he didn't speak the way that he does, and he was like, uh, excuse me, you know what I mean? Yeah, bro, yeah, bro, uh-huh. You think he would be making $84 million a year now? Or he was just a quiet little speaker. He has an exceptional command of the English language. I've studied his ass for years. And once you get to the point where you listen to him and you, 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 you start to feel the words, because one of the reasons that people like to listen to Rush Limbaugh is, Limbaugh is he makes them feel smart. He speaks to a certain educational level, and then they call in, oh, Rush, oh, for, first time caller, long time listener, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, skeet, 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 oh, Rush, oh, Rush, oh, Rush, oh, oh, because he can speak so well. I've listened to this for years. So if there's any distinct possibility that what I'm saying is false, go to his Wikipedia page. Look at all the money he's made and notice the fact that he has no education credentials whatsoever. And you know what's funny? No one has ever called him on it. Now, to his credit, he's never faked. He's never talked about his college degree because he doesn't have one. He's never talked about it. He don't even bring it up. But because he sounds so smart, people just go with it. That's how important it is to learn the English language and how to use it correctly. <laughs> Caddy Williams should try. Just keep it going. We're going to do another challenge today. Nope. Even if he's polarizing... There's other people who are polarizing. They don't make as much money as he does. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly's the same way. But Bill O'Reilly ain't nothing compared to Rush. Because I remember, now I used to listen to Rush Rent Limbaugh and Sean Hannity when they were at Ring, Ring Radio. Was 1987, 80, yeah, 87, 88. These guys did not have these conservative views that they have. They were conservative, but they were conservative that if it was wrong, it was wrong. 
If it was right, it was right. Did they not go to this hard right uh, position and posture they have today? They didn't have that. But when they found out that they could make a lot of money doing that, let's let's look at um Sean Hannity. What's his money like? What is old Sean O'Hannity? And he's a prick. He's an absolute prick. Sean Hannity net worth. $80 million. Salary. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is. All right. Let's see what we got on here. Bio professional career. He signed a $25 million contract extension deal with ABC Radio in 2004. And the city of commission procured the ABC Radio and later signed a $100 million five-year contract. You know what that is? You know what that is? That is NFL quarterback money. Highest salary in the NFL. 20 to 30 million a year. That is NFL quarterback money for <sighs> breathing on the mic. I'm just the messenger here. Just trying to explain some stuff to y'all because <clears throat> I had a situation today with a hater. And honestly, it was hard to understand this hater because he used so much jargon, so many euph euphemisms. And I don't think he's a stupid dude, but he sounds stupid. And I said, you know, you need to learn how to use the English language. And then he was just like, fuck you. I ain't going to speak proper. I ain't going to speak like no white person. That's He actually said that before I deleted his comments. That's the reason I'm doing this. There are many of you who are in that situation. Now, I'm going to give you some help here. And this is some stuff that I have done. All right. <clears throat> so first thing you want to do, <clears throat> excuse me. You want to go ahead and find out what your reading level is. It may shock you. It may humble you, but you can get past that. Then the second thing you want to do is get one of these vocabulary builder apps on your phone. Five words a day. We're talking about like five minutes. That's 25 words a month. That's 100 words a uh, 100 word, That's 25 words a week. 100 words a month. At the end of six months, your vocabulary would be bigger and better than 90 percent of the people walking this planet. Six months, because most people don't have a very large vocabulary. So you you want to go test yourself you want to do these these uh quizzes so you want to do that and you want to strengthen your vocabulary let's get rid of rush limbaugh and get rid of that then you want to do public speaking all right there's a lot of things you're gonna have to do some research for this but you want to test your reading level work on your vocabulary get a vocabulary building app six months I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pop up here in a minute you can have a bigger vocabulary than most of the people in the world in six months now, I know you're going like, Glennon, where's the money in that? When you have effective communication, you can open doors, you can open legs, you can open wallets, you can open people's hearts when you have effective communication. Years ago, I was dating this girl who was from Cameroon, African country. And I asked her, I was like, what is the deal with Africa? Africa has all these resources. What allowed these white people to come in and take over? And she said, without blinking, common language. 
She said in Cameron, we have 200 dialects. And if you are not with the people who speak this click, they don't fuck with you. Now, she says, this is a problem all throughout Africa. That each country has several dialects and the people who are speaking this dialect don't interface with the people speaking this dialect. This is why the English people ran around and ruled the world because they had a common language. At one point, it may have been Spanish. The Spaniards were pretty strong, then they fell off. The Greek were kind of strong, but they fell off. But the British Empire, it rose, and that became the de facto language of the world. There are more people who speak Mandarin, which is Chinese. There are more people who speak Farsi, which is Indian. But the language of money is English. The language of money is English. Right now, there are literally millions of Chinese students in school trying to learn how to speak English. This ain't no joke. They're trying to learn how to speak English because English is the language of money. And I'm about to get off into something else in a minute. Uh, let's see. And I just went ahead and totally got rid of my chat room. Yep. All right. Give me a second. I will uh, bring that back because I want to see. All right. Hold on a second. All right. Y'all are back now. All right. So let's go in there. This is just going to be interactive. We're going to build this community together. All right. Let's see. All right. Silver tongue, that's a good nomenclature. What's up, Lamo? Thanks for being the mod. You and Ganji. Uh, D train, right? We're, we're not going to get into politics here, and he's actually not right 99% of the time. You're talking to someone who's listened to him for years. Stop the bullshit. Do not take this conversation off track, or I will block your ass. James Alexander, I went to a Catholic school and I caught hell from my friends for sounding like a white boy. This is a common issue in the black community. Thanks for speaking on it, James, because we have a bunch of people who take pride in being fucking ignorant. I ain't going to learn how to speak the white man's language. I'm just going to speak all this ghetto gibberish when I get high. I, like some of the rap songs, I can't understand. I love rap. I can't fucking understand them. Uh, D. Hectrix, look, look, it, this is for Hannity. Okay, here's some facts for y'all. The average lifetime income of a person making, reaching the income of $50,000 is 1.3 to 1.7 million lifetime. This is the money that you make from when you were a little kid until you take that dirt nap. Anybody in Hannity is making $20 million a year. Let me, let me say that again. He's making $20 million a year. He's very well in that category. Because 99% of you motherfuckers ain't even making $250,000 per year. He is in that group. Stop thinking all these, you know, y'all watch these rap videos, y'all think everybody balling? $20 million a year is balling. It's balling. He is balling out of control because even after taxes, he still has double digit millions. Let me say that again. Even after taxes, he still has double digit millions per year. If I was to hand out like three million dollars to y'all like, hey, you get three million, you get three million, you get three million. That would change your fucking life. Shit. Let's lower it down. I hand out, you know, 100 G's that'll change your life. Let's not get overly technical here, okay? Uh, Alex Jones. Let's go ahead and look at his money. 
because he has a lot of it. Let's see where Alex is. Yeah, he's at 10 million, but once again, <laughs> I'm fucking close though. Um, Uh, D. Hector, best talkers and interviews on radio. Howard Stern also owns the entire catalog of his past shows. Howard Stern's another one. Steven Azar. Let me go ahead and give you some mod action. Um, 20 million a year for being a professional prick, so we're not getting off being nice. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Jane Walton. Some people don't understand speaking English. English language can help stimulate your brain and convey what you want to say to people better. Yes. Thanks, Lamo, for being a mod. The haters want to be like you. Oh, yeah, I know a lot of it's steeped in jealousy. Anthony Smith, read out loud more often. It does help. Troy Glover, I was called white boy Troy in high school because of how I spoke. Thank you, Troy, for sharing that. Because, see, there's a lot of black folks who don't act like they're like, they ain't a problem. No one ever did that. You know, when they find out that that behavior was shameful, ignorant, and stupid. Be real. While at my desk at Verizon, I used to read the dictionary and post three words a day on my computer to study. Expanded, vab- expanded vocabulary does change your life and understanding and lifestyle. Sometimes yo-yo don't get it, Johnny Walden. It it just doesn't. Derek, there's a famous book, 30 Days to a More Powerful Vocabulary, that's been in publication since 1942. Still available in paperback. Alicia Briggs, this is so true about common language and fitting in. This is how the British took over the world. They had one common language when everybody that they were duking it out with didn't. Justin Henry, that's how Africa is. I know, man. Uh, Let's see. Just jump. Archangel 3579, thank you for being the mod. Value is shown after the work is done. You think people are not listening? They're paying attention to what and to what you say and how. Blowing your mind, needing the kuna. Gunj, I believe one of Thomas Sowell's books mentioned how a common language can make or break a culture's development. Absolutely. This is why I'm going to share some stuff which y'all have never shared before. I think most black folks in the lower class of the community or the group or whatever you want, they're fucked. And this is why they're fucked. They have several different languages in the lower caste of black folks. There's northern slang. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? There's southern slang. There's Florida slang. There's Texas slang. And like in Africa, if you don't speak that slang that this group speaks, they don't fuck with you. We're supposed to be building an army of soldiers to combat white supremacy, but each contingency of the army speaking a dang- different language. How do you think that's going to work when the order's given out and everyone's like, well, he said, do this. Well, no, nah, man, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It ain't going to work. There's a group of progressive blacks who are breaking away from the lower class community and they're, jo- they're, they're joining the Republican Party. They're forming their own coalitions because they see where that shit's going. This ain't me hating on black people. This is me stating the truth about black people. And we have a bunch of folks who are not only ignorant, and that's not the problem. I have been ignorant, and some things I'm still ignorant about. That's not the problem. The problem is they want to stay fucking ignorant. That's the problem. Akun, I need to be an English teacher. All right. Let's see, put user in timeout. Mike C, you're so busy arguing on a small point, you're missing the fucking message. 
Grow the fuck up. Uh, you're at the library? <laughs> That's funny. Erica Williams is called Mumble Rap. J. Cole's only one standing. Green Machine, I was said to be the blackest white guy they know from black people. Thank you, Green Machine, for sharing your story. Because, see, this is one of the things that happens. When people come out and say, look, there are these um, problems in the black community. And when people are put on Front Street, they're like, no, no, we ain't never did that. We ain't never did this. But the minute we go to a side street, that corny sounding white boy, he's a white boy. He just looks black, but he's a white boy. That is a big fucking problem in the black community. And if you knew your history, and I'm, I'm about to get into this, of... All right. Now, let's see. Let's pull up a color for one. All right. Now, let's see if I can make that bigger. Is that going to work? I'm showing this to y'all for a reason. There are many black people whose history began and ended with slavery. Now, there will be many people who will tell you that Egypt is not in Africa, even though Egypt is on the African continent and it's on the tectonic plate. You could make an argument, because this over here is Saudi Arabia, that Saudi Arabia could be part of Africa, but it's not on the tectonic plate, so people just kind of let that go. But Egypt, Libya, Algeria, Mor Morocco, they're on the African continent. These are African countries. Now, here, there was some lot of powerful stuff that went down. There was architecture, there was math, there was science, and those folks just disappeared for some reason. Why, I don't know. But those folks were Africans. And some of you are descendants from these people. That's your history. Your history doesn't go back 400 years. It goes back thousands of years. So if you, like, look at it that way, and I guarantee you, these Egyptians... They created written language. They spoke a certain way. They created mathematics. They built things that are really incredibly hard to duplicate today. These were some smart motherfuckers. And that's your lineage, and that's part of your history. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. So I, I, I showed the map because someone's going to come in. Africa's not, in, uh, uh, Egypt's not part of Africa, man. You know, it's on the continent, but it's a different country. It ain't part of Africa. Yes, the fuck it is. So that's your history, people. Those folks who built those pyramids, some of you are descendants of those people. That's your history. And it included science, math, and speaking correctly. Let's see. Uh, Charlton19, thanks for being a mod. Phone translators also make good money per hour. Cool. Oh, okay. All right, the Hectrix. One of the things my ex-wife liked about me was my command of the English language. Do you guys know the guy Jeffrey that played the butler on the Fresh Prince? You know his story? Let's let me see if I can find it. You know why he got that role? Because of the way he spoke. On the Fresh Prince. Let's see. Joseph Marcel. Joseph Marcel is a British actor and comedian best known for his role as Jeffrey. He got that role because of the way he spoke. Jeffrey had exceptional command of the English language and it landed him a role on one of the most beloved shows ever. And I loved his character. And here he is today. Just another example of having the command of the English language. Also, you know, back in the day, some of us used to fake British accents because it made us immediately interesting and got panties wet. 
let's see, um, career. He's he's got a lot of body of work, but that's how he got on the show. Another fun fact for those of you that know. You know, married with children, a brother wrote that serious business. It was supposed to be like a spinoff of Good Times, but they was like, if we use black people like this, they'll they'll lynch us. But what if we use white people? Okay, I'll look it up for you and prove it. Married with children, and JJ was talking about that. Let's see, writer. Here he is. This is the guy that created Married with Children. Michael G. Moy. Married with Children is an American television sitcom editor on Fox created by Michael G. Moy. Didn't know. A brother, because he could write, because he had a, a, a command of the English language, he created a show and got paid. Yeah. I only I don't just yell at y'all, I educate y'all. <laughs> Green machine, this is one of the funny and stupidest things that black people do. You can look as dark and as you know dark as an African, but if you speak and act a certain way, you're white. This is one of the stupid human tricks of the black community. Donnie Breeze, so true. I get that all the time. Why you sound white? I just run the other way. Eric Williams, my painting company was uh, slammed back-to-back -back contracts all year long. Barely hit, and that was gross, not net. Yeah, okay, I don't know where that came from. Alex going through divorce numbers tanked. <laughs> Young Brand, I used to get the sound white thing as well. I let my tongue get lazy for a few years. As a young, impressionable child, and you're the only one speaking a certain way, and everyone's attacking you, it's only natural to fit in or to try to fit in. Who wants to be the odd man standing out in high school that no one talks to, no one socializes with? This is one of the reasons that I think that the lower class black community is just fucked. I see the videos. I, and I see with my own eyes this stuff. And then you'll have some hotel coming here. Well, it's your job, brother, to go to the hood, to reach down and help them come up. Did that. Almost got beat up. <laughs> you, you can't help people who don't want help. Awesome, Ganja. Oh, Nisha, I went through, uh, Nisha Briggs, I went through things like this in the hood simply for playing soccer. Soccer. Uh, let's see. Where's Anisha's comments? Because y'all got a lot in here. Um. Good Lord, y'all got some great comments up in here. Stephen Azar, Haitian Creole was one of the key factors in the war for Haitian independence. Yeah, this is why Hispanics live in large here because they speak Spanish and they could be talking about your ass and you won't even know because you don't speak their language. <laughs> Been the bartender, that's funny. Guns, it feels weird in high school. It was like I was posing to be ghetto for like four years at work. No one knew I was smart until the last two months of high school. This is a common experience of a, young, a lot of young, smart black males. They're shamed into conforming. The Hectrix, there you go. Everyone knows that someone speaks with a proper British accent is to assume they're intelligent. That's 100% true. Justin Henry, I had girls who say I talk properly were usually hood rats. Pretty much. 
Green Machine, I was told I had no swag, but those who have swag is doing bad, locked up, or bastard baby maker. Uh, I, I don't know if I could. I could post that. 2000, I wrote this piece about those dudes that had swag and how they don't have the ability to stick with anything. So they're good at getting women. They're good at hustling, but they don't have long-term endurance for building stuff. And this is why I like what you said. They usually end up falling off. Ben the bartender, right? Any idiot speaking English, English is looked at as a genius. Look at the current crop of Brit celebrities. And even with the Brits, there's a thing. There's a there's a guttural British language, Hackney English, Cockney English, and then there's RP, proper and posh. They got some shit going on over there because who like Simon, not Simon, but this other fool with the curly hair. Now, he doesn't even speak the posh or the, or the RP. RP is top notch English. And if you go here on YouTube, you'll see people teaching people how to use that language. <laughs> it's wild. Akuna, exactly. No unity, no progress. Uh huh. Trending business. When I was growing up and even the military, I was told you speak so proper. I actually had similar problems. Because I couldn't speak, I wasn't allowed to use slang, which is why I don't have a southern accent. And I caught hell as a kid. Erica Williams, oh my God, yes, there are breakout groups that are investing together. I know about 100 to well do folks right now who email me about deals and partnerships. The black, like those, like, you know, uh, the Bose, the talented 10th, they're breaking away. They're breaking away. I mean, it's a sad thing, but you can't help people who don't want to be helped. You just can't. Cool <laughs> was funny. SBG, you're changing my life in a major way. Thank you. The courses are making me more accountable of my choices. SB, congratulations. Really? Hmm. Ganja? It happens, man. Eric Wins, I went to poor school, said you were talking white, then moved to a no middle time, and all the kids were like me. There's a lot of black parents that really work hard to make sure their kids spoke correctly. And these people were mocked, shamed, and talked about. Why you don't want to talk like us? What's wrong with us? You ain't no better than us. Remember how I used to talk about tribalism? Right now, you have some black kid who has the intellectual capacity to become a doctor, but he's working some dumbass job because he's trying to keep it real. Or selling drugs. Dunny Breeze, progressive blacks, and quickly flock. I mean, it has always been a line of delineation, but I am seeing black flight like you ain't never seen before because where I live, a lot of people's like, where are the, where are the rich black folks of Atlanta? I say they're in this neighborhood. There's a ton of black folks in this neighborhood. They've been here a long time because they know even if the neighbor on the left is racist, even if the neighbor on the right is racist, they ain't going to fuck with them because they got to keep up appearances. They ain't going to be like some redneck in the pickup truck flying the rebel flag. I have not seen one rebel flag in this neighborhood in 11 years. Not one. Lauren Hayes, I'm direct descendant of Egypt, as you know. I did not know that, Lauren. I did not. Troy Glover, whitewashing Egyptian cover culture. Exactly. Gunja. Well, he actually moved to Britain. Then he actually moved to Philadelphia and he was talking and the producer says, hey, you want to roll on the show? That's how he got to be Jeffrey. 
Tina Turner turned British in three years. <laughs> Geo Maverick 124. Thanks for sharing, guys. Growing up, kids and adults used to alienate me for talking like a white guy and made me bitter for a long time. This is why everybody that had the, the, the courage to say something, because here's the thing that happens if you're a really smart little kid in the hood. First, a lot of white kids back then, because now the white kids will embrace you, but back then they didn't. And the black kids didn't embrace you, so you were on a fucking island by yourself. And for a child, that is horrible. These are your formative years. People are not hanging with you. They're not talking with you. They're making fun of you. And a lot of smart black men and black women went through that during their childhood. And now they're adults, and they don't really want to associate with lower class blacks. It's like, you don't want to be around your people. But their people didn't really want to be around them when it really counted. It really didn't. You know, um, I made amends with a lot of people because um, it was hard as fuck. First of all, I was a special ed kid. So I had to leave the class and go out to the trailers. They talked about me then. It was incredibly harsh. And, you know, thanks for everyone for sharing their stories because a lot of people don't talk about this stuff. So when the pro tep and hotep blacks go ahead like, hey, it happened. Oh, yes, the fuck it did. You had black people hating on other black people for the simple reason that they spoke differently. And it's disgusting. Glennon, is this why I love when the British person speaks? Johnny, it could be. Pamela C. Married with Children was written by a black guy. The things they don't tell us. This is what I'm here for, your hustling godfather, to inform you of stuff that you will not find anywhere else. I am an information junkie. I consume a lot of information. I've known that for years. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> it's me. I was called Oreo in high school. Anthony Smith. Hey, love, can I take you out in my dance? Oh, that's funny. Been the bartender. Me too. I see what you did there, Ben. I see what you did. Oh, Ralph Smart. Uh, what is his name? Can I get a hello? That's, he does that in every video. His channel is loved by people of all backgrounds. They love this dude. <laughs> I see I have just got y'all messed up with this married with children. Archangel 3579. It's funny that all of the movies and TV series are made by who? Writers. Yes. And to be a writer, you need to have a control of a vocabulary and the usage of words. In this future economy, this future world, creatives are going to own this shit. I took a pay cut to get back in my creative because I'm going to make that long dick style money. You know that my name's Tyrone and I'm going to fuck your wife long dick style. I'm going to make that long dick style money. That's why, you know, I made all these changes. You know, people like, well, you know, I got really patty and said, Oh, he can't afford it. He's going out of business. No, I'm gearing up for the real war. The culture war, the war of shifting and creating narratives. That's where the money is. Because once you have influence and you can control people and you control narratives, Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, Alex Jones, there are people who, who believe, treat these people like gods. If they didn't say it, it ain't true. That's how strong in the narratives that they shape. Been the bartender. It was very intellectual. Written by a brother. MJ Electronics. I get it every time when I'm at an event. My British accent people tell me they love it. This guy on the internet. I mean, it, it just blows you. It blows you away. All right. Good Lord. There's a lot of comments here. Hold on. <laughs> Y'all are messed up. Mm. 
no problem. Swoopman1972, it's amazing that racists use everything that blacks made and still hate us, such as the elevator red light traffic signal. Ignorance is, it is. This is why, you know, the people who are stuck on that slavery narrative, which is a real narrative, but it's not the only narrative. Our history goes back thousands of years, but some people are stuck at slavery and they need to give us reparations. That shit ain't going to happen. You need to get busy building your empire now, not waiting on or talking about some other one. Ganji, my cousin in Jamaica is special. He can speak Jamaican, Patwa, and proper English. Not many can do that. He's trilingual. Stefan, how about this? My brother went to college for psychology, but he doesn't know what coursework is. Maybe that's why he dropped off. <laughs> oh, man. Some folks just want to stay angry. Been the bartender. True. Eric wins. It was from earlier when you were talking about over the course of your life. Hard to make 100K in comparison with Sean Kennedy and Alex Jones. The first 100K is the hardest. Lauren Hazel. Meanwhile, I play field hockey. Oh, shit. You were an Oreo. <laughs> it was the only black field hockey goalie in the league in high school. It was in the top five players. Meanwhile, back in the hood, folks had jokes. <laughs> I know they had jokes. <laughs> they had a lot of jokes. Jill Maverick. No. Dude. We have. All right. Let, let's just go back to. A broader social issue. Fifteen percent of the population, there ain't shit for them to do. They're not smart enough because they have low IQs. They can't get certain jobs. A lot of them can't take care of themselves. And there's fifteen percent of the population, no jobs, no job they can do. This next recession is going to add probably another ten percent to their ranks. So that's fully twenty-five percent of the country with nothing to do. That is very, very scary. CCWMS, funny. Most blacks before, born before the 1970s speak proper English. Yes, they do. Emmanuel Gibbard, dear God, four years of school with all kids. The worst experience of my life was high school. A lot of us have gone through that. And when we talk about it today, we're mocked, we're shamed, we're told we should have been tougher. When those motherfuckers were vicious. Only thing that saved me was I got big. So I remember I actually got in a fight with a dude. And I kicked his ass. And the joke stopped. Because it's like, yeah, you know, they would whisper, but they, you know, they just stopped saying it to my face. Don't they bring, I think it's called speaking the King's English, King's English, RP, whatever. And let's not even go to the King's English. If you can not speak English, but write English very well, guess what? There's money for you. <laughs> There's a lot of money for you. All right, change. I relocated to Dallas. It's amazing how much more business I get when they meet me and see how well I speak. I don't care. This slick classism because all money spends. CCWMS. I find most active racists to be among the lower classes. Yes. On both sides. Lamos, when I went to England, I was in the military and I said, wow, there's light and speak properly and they, they could dance. I went to the club and I'm Puerto Rican and they could dance. I think you want to go back to England. Mama needs her wine. When my children go to visit their cousins in Brooklyn, they always ask them, why are you talking like that? They've been in private schools for years. <laughs> Woo! Will was like, all that language come from Africa anyway. So blacks say someone is speaking white. It just shows you they have no knowledge of the ancestors. 
Exactly. Because if you really knew what these folks did a long time ago, there would be no such thing as speaking white because it was Egyptians and Africans that gave the white people the language. But you, you, a lot of hoteps, they missed that part. They only hotep from 1970 up to now. Ebony, Ebony, I'm black and my family says I'm a white girl trapped in the black girl's body. Wow. Uh, let's see. Good Lord. Why did it jump? Glennon, I'm 50 years old and they still give me a hard time because when I was in the mentally, when I was in the mentally handicap, I spoke well a lot of LD classes and they still gave me a hard time. Lauren Hazel, yes, sad, but I had the experience. I busted my butt to get into an Ivy League high school. I kept close with all the black kids I met there. Together, we're doing extremely well. You know that movie, The Nerd's Revenge? Well, there's another re aspect to it. It's called The Black Nerd Revenge. All the black nerds, technical jobs, high incomes, doing well, and uh, Pookie Nim trying to holler and LaQuisha trying to holler, but they can't get in. Cool emote. Tyrone Burris, Married with Children was my show. You just blow my mind with this information. One of the things is a lot of us have done great things in every decade and every generation. And because of the media, you know, this is the Hustler Kung Fu media. I'm going to tell you about these successful black people and what they've accomplished, where the regular national media will not. They just, it ain't, it ain't in their best interest. Donnie Breeze, love the dialogue. This is a much needed conversation, but of course, lower class, busy, love and hip hop. Oh no, wait until this is over. I will be deleting comments left and right because the Hotep Nation's coming. Michael Watley, people always say I sounded like a white person on the phone when they met me for the first time. <laughs> Wow, the Jack 8181. My mom used to tease me and say some white family left me on the doorstep. That's extremely fucked up. Rockstone, Glennon, the billion dollar title will come from one of us. The writer, a Chinese language storyline infusing authentic culture as the real black creative aesthetic is popular the world over. Could be. I want it to be me. Eric Williams, yes, yes. I think many women will be leaving the workforce. A friend in Austin is increasing college educated men showing up to work on construction sites are going up. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X spoke proper English, not slang. That's how they were able to get their messages out. You know, Malcolm X studied the dictionary in prison. True story. Oh, Kevin, they coming. They coming. Johnny Walton, I used to get that all the time. And part of it is... When I worked at the Gallup organization, I have this phone voice that just comes on whenever I'm on the phone, and they can't tell. They just can't. And then they meet me, and the thing is, I'm a big guy. So not only did, did I sound that way, and they met me, and they were just like, because I remember, I had set this appointment for Mason. Mason couldn't go, so I went on a sales call. And I get there, and I said, hi, I'm Glendon Cameron. And she's like, are you sure? I was like, yes, we talked on the phone. Yes, we did. And she just didn't know what to do because she was just like, she was 100% sure that a white guy was going to show up. It just literally threw her for a loop. Lauren Hayes, if you know how to write good sales copy in, in places like in, NYC, you can make a lot of money. People will look for you. Never worked in an agency and writing commercials for PayPal and McDonald's. 
Got them skills that pay the bills. Yes, the original Matrix was written by a sister. She did not get paid. She got shafted. Kevin Davis tried to hang with the ghetto kids in school, but teachers saw I had more potential than that, and they were the reason I got scholarships and my ghetto homies didn't. Johnny Walker Glennon, thank you. I fell out of place for so long. <laughs> wow. Pretty much been the bartender. I mean, she was like thrown out. But once again, she was not racist. She was just thrown because we went out. I just threw this out because after I met with the people, it was a go. I knew I was getting the deal. I came out. And I, I leaned across the day and I was like, hey, you know, I really like the sound of your voice. I like to hear it over dinner. And she was like, okay. <laughs> she wasn't racist. She was confused as a motherfucker, but she wasn't racist. Charlotte, I'm 6'4". Same shit about people just not believing as me. Dude, I show up and they're like, because they expect this smaller guy to show up. The white lady was on the phone. <laughs> More deposit. I can't look into someone's eyes and think of something to say at the same time. What can I do to combat this? Get over to Disruptive Mail. We'll talk more about that. Pretty much, she got screwed. She really got screwed. All right, so I'm about to end this. For those of you who want to get in disruptive mail and got some shillings and coins and doublons to spend, go below the video, use the code word created for the promo. You get 50% off and you have to spend $350 or more to get lifetime access to tier one of disruptive mail. So that link's below. You can go ahead and knock it. And for those of you who are coming after this chat, be sure to hit the super chat. Super chat that down there. Donate what you can. Oh, uh, hmm. Was it really the Egyptians that gave us written language, music, and geometry, or the ancient Polynesians and the Syrians? Um, I'm going to say this, because that conversation's been brought up. Look what the Egyptians built and see that it's still standing. Those other cultures, they don't have that shit. So, yeah, they were older, but the Egyptians were smarter. Insults come from both sides for me. White people say you speak so well. They have heard that. Like I shouldn't be able to, but black folks sound like white. Where are, where are you from? All right, so I'm about to go. You got the, your marching orders, your directions, and we're going to launch Disruptive Mail Prep probably Thursday. And then we will go. All right, so we'll see you guys later. Thanks for joining me. And just remember, learning English, learning how to write, is not a white endeavor. It's a fucking African endeavor. So with that, I am gone.